Welcome back to Herman Brothers Field. It's the bottom of the sixth inning here in Palmer. Three to three is the score. With Austin Barrick, I'm Jesse Cook. Larry Westall back on the bump for his second inning of, rel of relief. The righty has the 8-9-1 batteries in the Oilers' order. Brett Groupie, the right-handed second baseman leading off, followed by catcher Cole Knockreiner and lead leadoff man Owen McElfatrick. Groupie digs in with a two-for-two two line halfway to the cycle, a single and a double to his credit. Westall's first pitch. He slings it low and away for a ball. Larry is a sidearm pitcher, and upon arrival, pitching coach Steve Hecker nicknamed him Crazy Larry as a result of his delivery. The pitch. Slider dances high and inside for strike one. And Heck, as they call him, has gotten a lot of credit thrown his way lately because his pitching staff has been great. His 1-1. Swung on, battered down the third base line, and foul. Before today, the Miners had allowed just one run in their last three games, so head coach Ty LeBron, a lot of his players, were all giving Heck a lot of praise. Oh, yeah, I mean, Ty opted to not do a post-game interview yesterday because he wanted the credit to be shown to Steve Hecker, the pitching coach. 1-2 pitch. Swing and a pop-up, first base side, and foul out of play. Tyler Brun, of course, won head coach of the year for the first time in his five seasons in Alaska, and he credited it all to the players and assistant coaches Kyle Watson and Steve Hecker. This is Heck's first season in Alaska. He joined the watson LeBron duo, and all three will be back next season. Westall's 1-2. Swing and a chopper to third over the glove of Caleb Hannes and into left. Groupie rounds first with a head of steam, but he stops there. Chops his feet and retreats to the bag. Alex Vergara cut off the ball down the left field line. And Brett Groupie is three for three. Could not come at a bigger time in an elimination game. That brings up catcher Cole Knockreiner. He hits from the right side and is hitless today, although he has an RBI after the sack fly that tied the game in the fourth. First pitch, he squares to Bunt, lays down third base side. Hannes charges, gloves it, throws on to first on the run. He got him. That moves Groupie into scoring position, but there's one away with the top of the order due up in Owen McElfatrick. Yeah, Hannah's made the running play at third. He does a lot of great glove work. Freshman year, he was all Missouri Valley Conference defensive first team. McElfatrick is 0 for 2, batting from the right side in a very low open stance at the front of the box. Westall, side arms. Fastball misses low and away. McElfatrick has been the leadoff man in every meeting he has started against the Miners. Westall dangles his right arm next to his knee. Now comes set. 1 0 count, runner on second. The pitch, runner off for third. He holds. That pitch misses low and inside. Groupie started running to third, but stopped himself halfway between second and third base. One away, runner in scoring position. That's the go-ahead run in this tight 3-3 game. Westall stares at second. Now it's 2-0. This is low and away. Larry has yet to walk anyone in this outing, although that problem plagued his predecessor in Candon Daly, who started the game and allowed two runs to score thanks to three walks in a row. To this part of the order, no less. The 3-0. Fastball right down the pipe for a strike. Now Owen McElfatrick came up with Groupie on base. He walked. Then Theo Forche on deck walked, and so did Nick Costello. That resulted in the Oilers' first two runs of the game. Three and one count. Runner being held at second. Westall fires. Fastball high and away, ball four. Michael Fatrick boards on a walk for the second time today. And that makes it a situation with runners on first and second for Theo Forche, who's 0 for 2 with that walk. Forche is a rising senior at UC Davis. He bats from the left side. Westall comes set, staring at home. 
He kicks and fires. Fastball low and away. Called a strike. And Larry has that distinctive setup motion where he starts in a triangle formation, arching his back and hanging very low, ready to sling it from the side. He poses exactly like that at a 45 degree angle bend at the hip, the 0-1. Curveball misses low and inside. The count evens up at one and one. Forche. During the regular season, batted a 247 line with 18 RBIs. That was third on the roster in ribbies. The 1 1. Backdoor curveball called a strike, blown away. One and two count. It's a great pitch. Great pitch. Great first pitch fastball stinging the outside corner, and a great 1 1 pitch right there to have the batter frozen. Larry is pitching a lot of these throws low. He deals the one-two. Misses in the dirt. Two and two count. Matsu has a very good double play defense. Turned three of them yesterday. Double play would end this inning. These two are tied 3-3. Matsu opened up the scoring with a three-run blast. The two-two. Swinging a chipper off his front foot foul. Alex Vergara, the Matsu left fielder, slugged the first home run for anyone in these playoffs, but the Oilers tied it up within a pair of innings thanks to that trio of walks and a sacrifice fly. It's the bottom of the sixth inning. There's runners on first and second for the Oilers, who are the acting home squad in this game two of the semifinal. Westall's 2 2. This is inside and plunks him on the foot. Westall ties his shoelaces and sends them off to first to load the bases with just one away for the league MVP, Nick Costello. The bases are loaded for Nick Costello batting from the left side. This situation incites a mound visit from pitching coach Steve Hecker. There's very little action in the Matsu bullpen. No one has begun warming up, although Matthew Lighthall and Preston Shadowan are both stretching. A pair of righties. Neither one has been used in over a week. Austin, if you're Steve Hecker, what are you telling Larry? Thanks for coming out tonight. Remember, it's not too late. Whew, five, oh, I'm, I'm telling him. Don't in think too show. much. Costello, and obviously a dangerous team. batter, Matthew but so far, hitless today, Ryan's had right. just one hit yesterday. You know, he struggled in his last four games here against Matsu. At the same time, don't leave anything up high. When Larry struggles, it's because he leaves it high. A high mistake here could be bad. The corners are in for Costello, who finished second in the batting race, five points behind Blake Jackson, with whom he shares that MVP award. Costello also fired in 17 RBIs. The pitch... This is inside. Costello walks off to first. Home plate umpire Aiden Sessler says he didn't think it hit him. Costello motions at his knee, and he's got to grab the bat again. This is interesting. Larry just looked at Costello like, hey, man, that wasn't even close. But then Costello looked at Sessler, the home plate up, and said, I don't know, man. I thought that hit him. And now here comes Larry McCann. Oh, boy. Now all three umpires are going to converge and talk about this. Luis Alvarez, the base umpire, Dale Rowland, the first base umpire, Aiden Sessler, the home plate umpire. All three of them have been at Herman Brothers Field many times this season. They travel all around Alaska. Sessler was one of the umpires that joined the Miners on the trip to the Kenai Peninsula. They have to send a delegation of umpires down there. Sessler breaks and motions to Castillo that he's got to stay put. Westall wipes his tongue off on his fingers a couple times and swipes them on his side. Stretches his arms and comes set again. Bases loaded, tie game, 3-3, one away. Bottom of the sixth inning. The MVP at the plate against the pitcher with the most appearances. Ready lefty matchup, the pitch. He swears to bunt but pulls back. Fastball missed up high and away. Costello is 0 for 2 with an RBI walk in this one. His first out was a fly out to left and then a ground out to second. That's who would welcome a ground ball up the middle. Corners are in, middle infielder is back. The pitch, swing and a pop-up, flared off to the left side and foul. Yeah, how about a double play right here? That'd be nice. Well, we just talked about it. Matsu is a good double play defense. Nolan Tucker said he has really good chemistry with Emilio Barreras, and they had to 
They had to form that relationship on the fly with Tucker joining the team in the middle of the season. Two and one count, Westall from the stretch. Fastball at the Sox, ball three. The Miners have already walked in one run today. Larry Westall is one wrong move away from walking in another. Costello with a closed off stance, crowds the plate at the back of the box. A pitch, swing and a rip down the first baseline and just foul by about two inches. Bright sunlight shines in over the right field wall. Blue shades across the mountains and it's heat on the ball field, 75 degrees, but it feels a million on the bump for Larry Westall. His 3-2, fastball low and inside, called strike three. Costello argues with Aiden Sessler. He swung his bat off to the side. Costello with a lot of words on his walk back to the dugout, but Sessler stays staring at the pitcher. A controversial call, and that has Larry McCann talking to the home plate up. That, that is the call of the day. And that I'm not breaking news by saying that. Wow. Wow. I wow. Sessler and McCann are still talking. Just left of home plate. Leighton Helfrick is awaiting outside the right right-handed batter's box. Westall takes a trip around the rubber. McCann and Sessler are still talking. McCann puts his fist on Sessler's chest and gives him a love tap. But no reaction from the home plate umpire. Sessler is the youngest umpire in the ABL. He's still in high school. Helfrick comes up to the plate. He's already got an RBI. The righty comes up with the bases loaded in a tie game. Bottom of the sixth inning. The Oilers can be eliminated with a loss. The Miners can move on to the championship with a win. The first pitch, swings at the fastball, slaps it into the right center field gap on the ground. One run scores, another one rounds third. Carpenter's throw to the plate is very late and the Oilers take a two run lead, five to three in the bottom of the sixth. Groupie scored from third. He had spent the entire inning there. McElfatrick scampered home from second. Now there's runners on first and second for Michael Elko, who's already two for three, and the Oilers have their first lead of the postseason. Righty lefty matchup, Westall comes set. Looks at second, now fires from the stretch. Fastball low and away at the knees, called a strike. Elko is two for three with singles in his last two at bats. Helfrick with the game changing hit stands on first. Runner on second as well, and McElfatrick, the pitch. Swung on, splintered out to second. Tucker charges, makes the play, throws on to first, and he got him. The Oilers still put up a twosome to take a 5-3 lead over the Miners in a hectic bottom of the sixth. To rebound, Matt Sue has its six, seven, eight hitters due up in Tucker, Tomerlin, and Hannah's. There's one hit between those three. We move on to the seventh inning. The Miners are trying clawing to clinch a spot in the ABL Championship Series, but the Oilers just will not say die. 